Hi there. My name's Derek. I'm a developer advocate at AWS. And in this video, I'll take you through all the steps and challenges you'll face while implementing an MQTT client that talks to an AWS IoT core backend. And I'll do this all in .NET. So why are we talking about MQTT and modern cloud applications? Well, a common component of these applications is that you usually have to write an API between the client and the cloud backend. This API typically takes the form of a RESTful or GraphQL endpoint that the client sends information to. But what if the client only has a small amount of bandwidth and or the network it's communicating over is unreliable or can go down? Well, this exact scenario happened to me recently. I was building a product in .NET that was going to run over an unreliable network. This application called DevPulse would communicate over a Wi-Fi network during a large conference. And if you have ever been to such events, you'll know that the network is often flooded as everyone uploads the best selfies they can of themselves to Insta. So I needed to use something other than the usual suspects of REST or GraphQL when building out this API. I needed a more reliable and resilient protocol that guaranteed message delivery. And that is exactly what MQTT can do. So when I was looking for examples of how to create this MQTT client in c -sharp, I was finding it very difficult to find examples that I could reference. Then, when I finally built out the application and deployed it, I started getting a number of requests from the community to show them how I built it. So, as a result, I made this video. So let's dive in now and see how I did it. So this is the cloud backend. And we're opening up the AWS console. The first thing we need to do is set up an MQTT broker. And we do this in AWS IoT Core. Once inside AWS IoT Core, we have to create a new container for the device we want to connect. We do this by creating what's called a thing. A thing is how we map something virtual to something physical and is a way of nicely grouping all aspects of a device we want to connect from, like certificates we use to authenticate and the security policies we want to apply. So let's create a new thing. For this demo, I'll have a single device, so I'm creating a new thing, and the first thing I need to do is give it a name. I'm going to call this one IoT Client 1. Next, let's generate and download the certificates. Now, these will be used to authenticate the device with the back end. As you can see, you can supply your own, but in this example, I'm creating my own. Along with the certificates you need to, for authentication, you need to add a security policy to authorize and control what incoming device messages can call. We do this by creating an IAM policy that we connect with the certificate. Again, we could use an existing policy, but I'm going to create a new one and define it in JSON. If we step through the policy, you'll see a number of things. Note that the actions that I'm allowing and the resources those actions can come from, namely our thing slash device. So what we are seeing here is that any device that starts with the name IoT client underscore can connect and can publish, receive, and subscribe to a particular MQTT topic, in this case called my underscore topic. Once that is done, we can create the thing. And last but not least, we need to download the certificates. This is the only time that you can download certificates. So once you've downloaded them, don't lose them. I usually download them all and put them somewhere secure. Once they're all downloaded, hitting next will create the thing and our MQTT broker is ready to receive messages and that's it for the back end. So now we have set up our AWS core back end to allow connections over MQTT on a particular topic. We have secured the connection with certificates with a security policy to only allow the connections from particular clients on particular topics. So using best practice by applying the concept of least privilege. However, using certificates is not the only way to secure connections with AWS IoT core. I have used this method as I had a very tight deadline for developing this application. Call it an MVP if you like. 
Another way you could secure the application would be to build a login UI as part of an authentication and authorization mechanism. The application could then negotiate credentials with the AWS backend, which would then allow authenticated clients to download certificates. This technique would be ideal for richer clients where you have a UI to interact with. However, showing you this is out of scope for this video, maybe in a future video. Let me know in the comments below. So next up, let's code up a simple client application to connect to the AWS IoT Core backend over MQTT. Let's jump back into the demo. So I've created a .NET console application scaffold, and the first thing I need to do is read in some settings files that will have the connection properties of the M2QTT broker I have just set up in AWS IoT Core. That's what I'm doing here, creating a broker settings file and putting the properties in that I need to enable the connection. The client ID setting is particularly important as it must be unique between clients. This is the way the MQTT broker identifies where messages are originating from. If this is not unique, then the MQTT broker on the back end will reject the messages. I'm setting a connection URL and a connection port. Always 8883 for MQTT messages. Once the settings file is defined, then I go in and define the JSON deserializer. And next up, I define the actual client, which I'm doing here. I will start by defining constants that point to the broker settings file and also the certificates that I need to authorize the connection, as well as the topic I will publish on. Notice as I write this out that the same topic uh, is the same topic that I defined earlier in the security policy. Next, I will create an MQTT client code. For this, I'm going to use MQTT Net open source library. I am using this library for a number of reasons. I find its API and documentation easy to use, plus it has an extension method called manage client, which handles all the connection, reconnection, retry, and local messages caching code for me. As a lazy developer like myself, this suits my needs perfectly as I le write less code. Finally, I will implement this library in my client code. For the sake of everyone's sanity, I won't type this out, but take you through the important parts. So here I have in the broker client itself, I'm initializing it. So I go into this function, which initializes the client using a factory method. Inside this initializing code, you'll see I'm using a managed MQTT client, which is the extension method. I inject the broker settings and also read the various certification files that I need and add them to an X509 certificate list. These are all required by MQTT.NET API. Once I've done that, I then pass in the client ID, remembering this has to be unique between clients the address of the backend and the port. I then set up uh, the certificates by enabling TLS and SSL 212. Once I've done that, I then add that to the managed client builder, and then I'm adding here some listeners so I know when a message has been sent or the connection has been refused. Next call is to start the client itself. So once that's coded out, I'll just show you how I read the certificate file. So this needs to be return a byte array, which is the contents of the certificate file. Once I've established that, the next bit of the code is the sending message part. For this, I'm simply doing a test message. I generate a message object, which is required by MQTT net. I then pass in the topic and also I pass in the quality of service. I'm using at most once. You don't have to, there's other options there, but for this purpose, I'm using at most once. And then enqueue the message and send the message from the client to the broker in the back end. So we've created our back end, and now our client application is ready. Right? Well, no. Because we are developing this in .NET, there is an extra step that you have to do. 
As we have seen previously, in order to establish an MQTT connection with AWS IoT platform, we downloaded the Amazon root certificate, the private key of the thing, and the certificate of the thing. However, although the .NET cryptographic APIs can understand Amazon root CAs as CRT files and device private keys as .key files out of the box, it expects the device certificate to be in the .pfx format not in the .pem format as supplied by IoT Core. So we actually need to convert the device certificate from PEM to .pfx. So let's see how we do that. So I simply navigate into the folder I downloaded the CIFIC certificate to and use the OpenSSL tool. Note if you're using Windows, you may have to download additional software to use OpenSSL. So with OpenSSL, I call pkcs12 command to generate the pfx cert and pass in the public and private keys I have. Once I've done that, you'll be prompted for a password to protect the generated certificate. And that's it, done, ready to go. You now have a PFX file. For this, I, um, I'm just using an empty password. Please don't do this in production, thank you. So now we have our client back end and the correct certificate set up. Let's test this connection. Obviously things never work first time, so to help you debug and make sure you log everything from the client, please do. In my setup, I have attached listeners to particular client events, like connection and message events. This will help debug issues with the back end, and I'll show you how to set up monitoring and observability in the back end in the final demo as I test out this application. So let's get into that now. So, we have the new cert generated. So let's plug in that to the properties at the top of the class and see what's happened by running and pressing F5 on the application. Once you do that, hopefully you'll see the logging that I've implemented when it tells you that the client is connected. So let's press F5 and run, run this. After a few seconds, after the client connected message seen here, then the message itself will be successfully sent. So let's see how that looks in the back end. Here we are in the AWS console, and inside here we have an MQTT test client, which we can use to sub subscribe to the same topic we are sending the messages to from our client. So we can see the messages come through, which is very, very handy for debugging. So if we subscribe to this, my topic, and then jump back to the client and send another message, when we switch back to the test client on the AWS console, we should see that the message comes through. And there it is, nice. We can also switch from here to AWS CloudWatch and see the messages as I've routed them all from AWS IoT Core into CloudWatch. This will help with debugging as well. So let's see some messages, there they are. There are some messages. As well as that, I can also see events in CloudWatch like connect or connection refused. So this again helps with debugging and we can get detailed errors on why particular events have or have not succeeded. If we from CloudWatch step back into AWS IoT Core, Next thing I want to do is show you more settings like log verbosity that I can change inside the IoT Core console. And you do this under settings. You can also change the IAM policies as well as switch the debug logs, which I'm doing here. Finally, as well as changing settings like this, you can route messages that arrive on our topic via the writing section. Here I have set up a routing to CloudWatch logs. However, you can also write other AWS services like AWS Lambda to send your client messages to more complex backend applications. So there you have it, a fully functioning MQTT connection to an AWS IoT Core backend, all written in C Sharp. As you can see, it's a straightforward enough set of steps using the MQTT Net open source library, 
we have not only been able to create the initial connection and start sending messages, but we've also been able to take advantage of the Manage Client extension that's built into the library. So that establishes a resilient connection with built-in local storage and reconnection capabilities to boot. Once you have your client connected to AWS IoT Core, you can you then do things like route events to other AWS services via Lambda, and in turn into other services that perform your application's business needs. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more on similar topics, let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the Build On AWS YouTube channel. Thanks, and keep on building.